The Pynchons live a traditional country life in Gloucestershire. Husband Darren and his wife Nadine have three children. Chloe, 11, Lily, 9, and Harry, 5. Red Curtis and husband Dan live in the heart of Brighton. They don't believe in rules or discipline for their three-year-old son, Spike, and Red's daughter from a previous relationship, 18-year-old Xanthi. Go on. Nadine and Red have agreed to swap families for two weeks to find out what they can learn from the experience. How will a mum who believes in free will cope with being a disciplinarian? For God's sake, you fat bitch! They don't listen to you at all. What happens when a husband says no to the new rules? It doesn't matter, I guess, at the end of the day, it doesn't get done. It doesn't get done. Well, your husband doesn't do it, does he? And how will the families react when they're reunited? When I left, I thought that I would miss you more than anything in the world and I didn't miss you as much as I thought I'd miss you. Bottom ones, top ones, middle ones, on. downstairs, Hi. chip chop. Nadine and Darren Pynchon believe that set routines and discipline are important for their three children. Good boy, come on then. If I ask the children to do things and if I ask them to, really they should do it, I believe that you can be firm but you can also be kind. Their children are kept in line with a star chart that helps the family's country life run like clockwork. Have you been nice to Harry and Chloe this morning? Yeah. No, because you argued on the tractor with Harry. It's quite challenging because yeah. a lot of the time we like we'll get a tick taken off as if we're naughty. The children's chores start at the crack of dawn when they get up with Mum Nadine to feed the farm animals. <laughs> With the farm taken care of, Nadine gets on with the domestics. My chores are everything around the house. Cleaning, ironing, hoovering and being a mum. On top of family duties, she also runs a bed and breakfast. If something needs doing, I'll do it because Darren's not here. It needs to be done. Husband Darren is the family breadwinner, working long hours at his garage. I probably don't spend as much time at home as I should. Nadine does tell me that, but it's hard to do both. It would be quite nice if he could devote his time to, not, not just me, but the family. I think we need more family time because um, we don't have it's much like mum's over here, dad's there, we're here, and we don't really get opportunity to talk. Darren, dinner! Me and Nadine, well, we have a good relationship deep down, but we do have our moments. Thank you very much. Darren's not a romantic guy. That's just the way he is, and I have to accept that. If we spent some time together, we'd go on really well. Yeah. In Brighton, life for the Curtis family revolves around work and running their alternative fashion business, Red Mother. Oh, you're all right. Hi, Good. Yeah, we're just going to go and get ahead downstairs, I think, aren't we? Get sewing. Red Mother is our whole lifestyle. It's us, it's everything we do. Pretty much everything we do is focused around it. We work together most of the time, and when we're apart, we're on the phone or texting. We know each other's movements, but where the other one is, all day. Red and Dan have been married for six years. They're a team at work and at home, where they share all the household chores. Any cooking, dishwasher kind of stuff, it's just whoever's there. Dan and Red might be a tight unit, but it's a different story for Dan and his stepdaughter, Xanthi. I think, I think Danny's really interested in what I do. If it had to be just me and him by ourselves, I think it'd just be dead silence. It's been hard, really, because Anthony was uh, 12 when we met, so she literally went straight into a nightmare, nightmare uh, teenage stage. The Curtis's rebellious attitude to fashion spills over to their home life, where there are no rules for Spike and Xanthi. Well, my brother doesn't have any boundaries. He gets to do what he likes most of the time. No! Our life's definitely chaotic. I don't know what normal is, but we're not normal. <laughs> it's the day of the swap, and the wives are preparing to leave. I haven't packed for any particular occasion, but then I wear really inappropriate clothes all the time anyway. 
don't cry, darlings. Please don't <laughs> cry. Bye, bye. bye. Love you. Have fun. I see mud. I see. Uh, I saw my first ever free range chickens. Before they meet their new family, Red and Nadine have a chance to explore their new home. Oh, they ride horses. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Obviously, they're busy people because, you know, not necessarily is everything put away. Because I tend to work hard in the day and then we'll clear up at night time when I've got time. Three charts, so there's got to be three kids, I'm guessing. They've all got different rules. Be nice to each other. I see maybe dressing up clothes. Maybe they do stunts or something. Each wife has written a manual as a guide to the running of their home. We run a traditional household, yes you do. My role is to run the house and Darren doesn't help with the... Oh! <laughs> what does Darren do? It's great working with Dan as we get to spend most of our days together. I think working with your husband or your partner is a lovely thing to do. My kids know right from wrong and must respect me. Mm. Respect, I have a bit of a problem with the word respect. I think it's important for the kids to think for themselves and make their own decisions. I think children need boundaries to um, respect things. It says they also have set bedtimes and I'm not very good with the clock. Spike has no set bedtime but chooses himself when he wants to go to bed. Xanthi was born when I was 17 and since birth I have left her to her own devices. And I refuse to smother mother her. She's not going to... I'm just worried about my kids. Hiya. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. How Pleased to meet you. This is Spike. Hello. Hi, Spike. It's a little bit under the weather. Hi. Hi. Pleased is, to meet you. This is Anthony. Hi. What's your name? Nadine. Hi, Nadine. Hi. Hello. Are you all right? Hello. 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 Thank you. Nice to meet you. Well this is Harry. Harry. Oh, give us a kiss then. Mwah. Oh, that's a nice greeting from you. This is Chloe. Hello. You're right. And this is Lily. Oh, you're all nice and affectionate. I'm going go back to work. Okay. Uh, for about an hour. And okay. I'll be back in a bit. I'll be back. Okay. And I'm supposed to have food on the table at half seven. For sure. Definitely not my choice of uh, of lady, but she seems very nice anyway so far. At the courtesies, Nadine is welcomed by Dan with a home-cooked meal. This is a real treat for me to have somebody cook me tea. Good. The pasta, I didn't turn it on high enough. It is still nice, I will admit. If it had been cold and mushy, it wouldn't have mattered. It's the fact that somebody else has cooked it and it's fine. There's no rest for Red, who has a strict schedule to stick to. When's going to be tea? When's going to be tea? Yeah. Um, when do you, well, after you've done this, is that when you usually have tea? Have an hour. It's tea. Have an hour. Okay. Have Will you go and sit down? We've got to cook more yes. for your dad because there wasn't enough in the pan for a, for a man as well. A bit more. Yeah. Um, that's enough for Harry. He's got his little plate. Let's have that. That's yours. In our house, you can just have tea whenever you like. It just doesn't matter. It's just not important. Hello. Evening. I'm running behind. You're running behind. Don't worry. Do my best. Do your best. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I just want to go and like read the paper now, just for like 20 minutes, so I can feel like I've um, done something for me today. Just feel like all I've all I've done is stuff for other people. Working mum Red Curtis is getting a rude awakening. Living as rural mum Nadine Pynchon. It's 6am and she's up to feed the animals. Come on then, let's get them. She's got three kids to nurture and sort of look after. Don't understand why she needs, like... There must be like 50 animals here. Why do you keep them? They're horrible. No, she must get something out of them. She must like mothering things. After feeding both the animals and the family, 
Red has to look after Nadine's B&B guests. I'm doing my best this morning, you have to bear with me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you. But her list of chores doesn't end there. Red, I, I just, I've left a few bits of bobs for the fencing. OK, where's it? Um, I put the, the, the hammer and the sledgehammer yeah. in the, where the stables are. And if you want to chop some wood, the axe is in the carriage. Go back, go. <laughs> in a piece of wood. <laughs> I'll give it a go. Usually, Red spends all day working with her husband, Dan. But living as Nadine, she only has animals for company. She obviously quite likes being alone because she seems to spend, like, sort of from now till three, she's by herself, isn't she? Darren could definitely do this job, really, couldn't he? I'd find it quite lonely. Hey, oh, puppy, don't come near this. You want to get your leg cut off or something, do you? Keep talking to the dogs because I'm so bored. Country mum Nadine is always up by six. But at Red's house, the day doesn't start until Spike decides to get up. After 8 a.m. Good morning. Good morning, Daddy. It's very different that the children get up before or you wait for them to get up. I was just pacing the floor right up, I'd made my bed, I'd put everything away and I was like, I can't do anything, I can't get out of the room, I was like, um, so I sort of got dressed, I was just itching to get on and, and do something really. At home, Nadine spends her days working alone. But today, she's off to work alongside her new husband. This is Nadine. Hi. Hi. Nice Pleased to meet you. Hi, Andy. Andy. The shop sells customised second-hand clothes, and the alterations are done in-house. So we've got loads of stuff to price up. OK, cool. Um, which you could do in the D, and then I've got loads of other stuff. Yep. And we've got to do loads of sewing. Um, I might get on with some sewing then, Yeah. I think. Oh. We've got lots to do, so. I love sewing. Do you? I make curtains Brilliant. and bedding and clothes, made oh, my own cool. wedding dress with my mum. <gasps> So Fantastic. Haven't done the industrial ones, up. but um, oh no, I love it. So this is really nice. You, you and Red just sit here and sew together and chat about everything and just do what you like doing. Yeah. I yeah, mean, this is really nice. It's fantastic when you can actually get down and sew yeah, together. Yeah, and do it. And you've got everybody in here and yeah, you can have a bit good, of chat. Yeah, good atmosphere. Great girls. Dan and I don't spend much time together because he's working and I'm doing what I'm doing. My priorities are my family, my children and Darren and my friends. I think Darren's priorities are us, but we're, work is important to him because he's a, you know, he's a workaholic. As a traditional wife, Red has been doing the housework on her own all day. She's used to having help around the house and without it, it shows. a stressful day because there's a lot of things left out of the fridge those things sort of bug me really and there's breakfast there on priest on the table um, hmm. on top of a list of chores red is also responsible for the children going to bed on time if you're not disciplined with them uh, they'll just walk over here and it'll be 10 o'clock before they get to bed and that's no good for them because yeah. in the morning you I have a like more matey approach with my kids. I need to bark a bit more, don't I? A little bit more. You okay. might find it hard, but you do, you do I need to go to really and say Come on. You had tea. What have you eaten today? Packet of crisps, Daddy two sandwiches, bottle of cereal, grapes. I think tomorrow we def you definitely, definitely need to get to that tea early. Yeah. And they need to definitely get into bed later on. We should, should have some time tomorrow. A bit more later. I thought we were doing tomorrow, but hopefully you might have some time. The place might be tidy. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you can all but try, eh? Yeah, I will try. While Red is settling in for the evening, Nadine is heading out on the town, as it's Anthony's birthday. Hey! Hey! Dressed up. I dressed up my bunny. She looked fantastic. Do you need tickets or are we on um I just say there's a 
like this regularly with your mum? Not really. On Would special occasions, very special occasions. Because when I've been in the house, I haven't, you sort of stay quite a lot in your bedroom. Do you normally do that? Or? Well, when I'm there, my mum's there. I do sit with her for a bit, but she's always working. Right. She's always on the computer. I know how busy she is and how stressed she is. So if I just sit there nagging her and nagging her, she's just going to get angry and argue with me. Because Spike, obviously, is your mum and Dan's, yeah. do you... Feel a bit left out with all of that. I used to really resent it, like them being their own little family and then me. Danny used to like he wasn't very nice to me. He might he, like everyone thinks that the sun shines out of him, but he wasn't. He was horrible to me as well. It was nice to have a chat um, with Zampi tonight, just because since I've been here, I haven't really had more than a couple of words said. I really do think that she has big issues with Dan, just because she just said that she doesn't right from the start. She didn't like him. A happy birthday! Okay, all right then, cool, see ya. Thanks for leaving us all in. <laughs> With Darren off to work, Red's yet again left in charge. According to the manual, she'll have to enforce strict discipline, but she's hoping she won't need to. That was really naughty last night, wasn't it? So I'm not going to do that again. Because I think you're a really good boy. You don't want to behave like that, do you? No, I don't think so. Come on, Lily. Come on. Tidy your room, please. It's not tidy, I've just looked in it, it's really messy. I think your mum wouldn't allow that, would she? Your room to be like that. Yes, she would. No, she wouldn't. I know for a fact she wouldn't. It takes ten minutes to tidy your room, that's all it takes. <coughs> come on, out you come. Can we just go away? No, well, you can go away if where you go is up to your room to tidy it. So I don't know how much their shouting works, because they're shouting at her, but they're obviously not dealing with why she's behaving like that, just shouting at her. I think talking to them would just be better. She's obviously craving something if she's like doing all this ridiculous behaviour. I'm quite shocked by it. Ah, oh, strong man. After a difficult morning, Red hopes to win the girls over with their daily horse ride. If there's going to be fighting, we won't do any nice things tomorrow. Lily, if you swear once more or be nasty, we're not going to do it. Right, that's really ridiculous. Give me it now. Never hit a person yeah, with it. Never. Horrible. I don't care. You don't hit people. Yeah, but she's being horrible. You still don't hit people. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave this one up then. No, leave every single job no. where it is. No, no. Can you put the horse? Lily, Lily, can you go and put the horse away and I'll sort this out, please? You're really upsetting the horse, look. Can you go and put it away, please? He didn't know what to do, because, like, he just didn't know, I don't know what to, how to stop it. I don't know, like, they don't listen to you at all. I saw you hit your sister with a whip and I've just seen you throw something at Harry. He threw it at me! Right, I'll put them away then. In Brighton, once again, the morning routine is dictated by Spike. Nadine and Dan can't go to work until he's ready. Oh, ready. All ready to roll. Oh, good boy, well done. I want to sell my yours. Do you? Are you ready? Yeah. I didn't think a three-year-old three could rule a, a house, but he really does rule this house. If you just eat a little bit more breakfast, because you're going to get really yeah. hungry. He has what he wants, he does what he wants, he goes where he wants, he says what he wants. He's three. By the time Spike is dropped at nursery, it's after ten when Nadine and Dan arrive at the shop. Following her chat with Xanthi last night, 
Nadine is keen to talk to Dan about her concerns. She said that now her mum gets so stressed out with work and stuff, so she's tried to talk to her, but they just end up shouting and Red just shouts at her. And Yeah, I can understand Santhi saying that because that's Santhi's side of the story. Mm. Um, Santhi's put on a very good show of being a, a quite an ideal daughter. She'll say she tried to talk to her mum, she doesn't want to talk. It's vice versa. You know, yeah, no, this you can is imagine Red trying to talk to her. I'm trying to watch this, I'm trying to watch this programme, I'm watching EastEnders, I can't talk now. Maybe when Red wants to talk to Xanthi, she's busy watching telly, so she does the same thing back. Yeah, I don't see watching telly as being busy. No, no, it's not Xanthi busy, but she classes college. that, that's her thing. You, uh, Red classes working as her thing. I see working as more important than watching the telly. said I was shutting the door and I'm shutting the door. It's Red's second night of putting the children to bed without the help of Darren. Their bad behaviour earlier means she's taking a stricter approach. Five seconds and I'm just going to pull you out and go and take you up to your bed. Do you want to do that? Five, four, three, two... One. Come on, hold my hand and come to bed. Come on. Don't be silly. You just walk yourself. What? Do you want to come up with this? felt awful because I just like thought I've just made this child so unhappy just to get him to bed on time. What's the point? If there's no discipline in this house, um, people just don't respect anybody, well, especially Lily and Harry. In Brighton, an evening photo shoot in the shop is taking priority over Spike's bedtime. Maybe that more noise? miserable. It's what? my phone. <laughs> I, I've got to look miserable Everyone's as well. Or a fake smile. Noise, Everybody Dad. over the top. Like one, two, God three. <laughs> if this was my business and I did this tonight, I wouldn't be bringing my three-year-old child. Part of it, just coming up to eight o'clock at night, and you know, Spike's still up, no tea, no sort of routine. Can you look sad, Spike? Let's get Spike crying. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, boom. Shortly before 9pm, they all arrive home. Are you hungry, Spike? No. No, are you tired, Spike? Yeah. yeah. I would have just done it slightly differently. I would have perhaps picked him up earlier and I'd have gone straight to the shop, but he'd have had a packed lunch so that he'd have had his tea. Um, at tea time, so when he came back he was ready to go straight to bed because he was tired when he came back. It's the weekend and Darren is at the garage again, but this time it's not work. It's for fun as he tinkers with his rally car. I feel like the workload could definitely be shared out a bit more. Like, even if Darren just got up on a Saturday and, um, if Darren just got up on a Saturday and, like, um, made breakfast for all the kids. That would just be a job gone for Nadine. I prefer my mum and my dad just because, well, at the moment, because we spend more time with her and I know her better and I can kind of turn to her. Uh, yeah, probably quite I don't want to be a stay-at-home mum. It's just not for me. I need to have something else to, like, think about and something else to do, really. Sort of dreading the rule changes tomorrow because I think whatever I do is just going to cause more chaos. It's rule change day, and both wives are eager to make an impression. There we go. I'm a traditional mum, and I do think that family comes first. Work is very important, but in my life, family is absolutely top sure. priority. I've got some few changes. First thing's routine. Um, so we'll all be getting up at six o'clock in the morning. 
so you can have good nearly two hours in the shop mm -hmm. working and getting stuff ready and selling and stuff without any interruptions really because I think you can get so much more done without interruptions. Yep, excellent. The first rule I want to bring in for the kids is a bit of free thinking. There's no bed times because it's been the most stressful time for me here is making everyone get to bed. Now by that I don't mean that you sit up till three in the morning, <laughs> you know, when you're actually tired make the decision to go to bed. Spiker tends to rule the roost quite a lot. Okay. Um, I just think that it would perhaps be nice to give him some kind of reward or some kind of thing to encourage him to even sit at the table and have his tea because he will be having tea at tea time. Darren, I think you're just a great block. I think you provide for your family, you work hard. The biggest change that all the kids want from talking to them is more time with you. Tomorrow we are going to have a family day and we're all going to go out together. Speaking to you guys, I think that it would be really nice if you could spend some time together. It's important that, you know, maybe the sitting around the table at dinner time will help that and it might make you both more relaxed around each other. Yeah, it means that they should spend time together. It's silly that we don't. You might not like this, but I want you to take a day off and I want you to do Nadine's schedule just to see what all that she does in a day and I want you to like really think about it and think how you can ease her workload. So, um, you will be needing this <laughs> as you will be making tea Thank you very much. for everybody. <laughs> so where's my mashed potato? Harry, you didn't ask for mashed potato. Darren's first task is to cook dinner for the family, something Nadine has never experienced. But yeah, I've got a problem cooking. I'll give it a go. I can, I can cook really, but just, to be honest, I'm really lazy. <laughs> and that's probably my real problem, so I can't be bothered. It's nine o'clock, and although there are no set bedtimes, the kids are flagging. Go on, little man. You ready for bed? Yeah, Tired, you sleep certainly on, is, aren't you? You're going to go up your dad then. Yeah, go on. Give me a shower, Let's go. Mm. Mm. Carry. Oh, oh, I'm not surprised you want to carry. You nearly sleep, aren't you, Harry? Come on, then. Good lad. Carry. Oh. Right. Have a nice sleep, Harry. Oh, See you in the morning. Tiredness. Night. That's the type of night I want. Peace. Go to bed. Everyone relaxed. Go to bed. Nice. To be fair, in that sort of in that sort of way, you'll go to bed most nights like that. He's just like that. I don't have no trouble with him. So, but that wasn't going to bed under free will, really, as far as I'm concerned. That was tempted to bed. <laughs> You've coaxed into bed. Nadine's rule changes mean the Curtises now sit down together at meal times. And where are you going tonight? My friend I've known her uh, for like a few years, it's her birthday. Uh, where are you going? Uh, I don't know yet. I think Nadine's rule changes are excellent. I think that me spending time with Danny and this whole experience will benefit me and him more than it would my mum, I think. Nadine is also introducing a star chart to reward Spike for good behaviour. When they get a bit older, the stickers aren't a huge, big thing about the stickers. Mm. We just put ticks, because yeah. otherwise then it's cheaper, and then they have a star for every ten ticks. He's young, he's young for it, I think, um, So, and he ain't going to change in a, in a day. Red and Dan usually spend their evenings making clothes for the shop, but Nadine now wants Dan to tidy up. Maybe sort out where the coats are, a little coat hanging thing or something in here. You know, I don't mind sort of you watching these or doing something. No, it was a bit annoying. Nadine was still cleaning out the dishwasher. And I was like, well, I've, I've kind of had enough. But when they're still doing something, you've got to still do something. Just, it doesn't matter, I guess, at the end of the day. It doesn't get done. It doesn't get done. It's very hard to tell somebody else's husband to do something. But your husband doesn't do it, does he? But this isn't about my life bringing it here. Like, you said you'd be up here now working on the computer doing work. Well, I was trying to say, look, don't do the work. Let's try and organise the house. I don't feel like I've taken control because he took the rules, but not with lots of enthusiasm. So I was a little bit upset in a way. 
It's Sunday morning, and under Red's rules, Darren must now do all of Nadine's chores. Just the cornflakes, right? Cornflakes. Uh, I've seen it somewhere. Yes. You know, the trouble is with me, I'm, I always come back too late, and I'm always, I think it's too, too much of a rush. I've wanted to cook anything, so it's not in the fridge, and you just think, oh, it's just so much grief. And Nadine can just pick things up on the way home. Maybe I should be picking food up on the way home and cook, you know, even if I'm a bit late. Red also wants Darren to spend more quality time with his children. Go on, Harry, go! There he goes. Should we go there together? Ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> 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 Harry. <laughs> I haven't seen Dad in like a play park for over like three years. He never ever like participates in stuff like that. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? It's brilliant. It is good fun. So, go. I think you work. You start working too hard. You actually forget all the fun times you ever had, all the fun you can have. Ooh. And uh, not until you start doing it again. Just letting yourself do it. That's the problem. Having opted out of tidying up last night. Dan is up at 6am and giving Nadine's decluttering rule a go. Don't need that. Don't need that. That's Red's jackets. Really? And she's, and she's, and she's taken all her stuff away with her because this, this is just the excess. <laughs> this morning was uh, fine. I was up first and uh, emptied the dishwasher and got everything done. And Nadine was just getting up and then I just got on and did the... Um, the coats downstairs because I wanted to, uh, yeah, I wanted to basically commit to the rule change. Spike is also starting to benefit from Nadine's changes. Oh, look at these stickers. Are these off Doctor Who? Yeah. Would you like one of those? Yeah. Yeah, you need to finish your breakfast and then you can have one. Well, you can have one of those stickers if you eat your breakfast. Where do you want it? Put it there. That's for eating your breakfast, like a really good boy at the table. As part of the rule change, Nadine wants Santhi to help more around the flat. Do you want to give me a hand to cook, do some veggies and stuff? Okay, cool. Go like that. And you can use that one, or you can go that way. But watch your nails, because I tell you what, I've, I've peeled my nails off before, just sort of, when you're going really, well, I go really fast. After morning chores, Xanthi's meeting up with her boyfriend, but has promised to be back in time for Nadine's family walk. She was very helpful this morning, and, you know, she helped with lunch, and she helped with preparing dinner, and, you know, we were talking about some ideas in her bedroom, um, and then she asked if she could meet her boyfriend outside, where I thought... Half an hour's fine because we've sort of got some jobs here. She has been good. She's done the washing. Can't expect her to work like a slave. She's a teenager. So um, she said she wouldn't be long, but she hasn't come back and we can't get hold of her. So. Can you see the birds? You get me? Ah! Yay! Quite upset after changing the rules last night that Xanthi didn't come back today to come with us on the walk. Uh, yeah, you would have thought she would have come, wouldn't you? Yeah, does she not normally? If you asked her to come home, would she come home normally? The lottery? I don't know. Yeah. I know I'd never, I'd never arrange something like that. It's, it's not personal, she does it to everybody. Oh, OK. But uh, it's just a general lack of concern for anybody else's feelings. But herself. Despite Xanthi leaving a message that she wouldn't be back for the walk, Dan never received it. I just thought maybe we'll have tea, pretend there's nothing wrong, and then I'll talk to her about it, because I think that it might cause an atmosphere through dinner, and I don't want to cook that dinner for an atmosphere around the table. There is an atmosphere? Sorry. Yeah, I know, but I just it's, thought... She's already created it. Oh, right, OK. Can you not feel it? Look at that, Spike. Mashed potato, mashed potato. Did you enjoy that something? Yeah, 
Um, how come you didn't come back with us to come to the doctor? Oh, oh, the emergency doctor. I went and oh, took me there. Because I hit my own knee off and my stuff out. What's the lid? lid, yeah. yeah. I didn't know Xanthi had hit her head, did you? At all? No, I didn't. I don't know whether I quite believe the story, to be honest with you. I don't want to mistrust her, but I do. This is her. That's her. And I don't trust her, whatever she says. Dan decides to call the doctor to check Xanthi's story. She did go. Who did you speak to, Owen? Bright Doc. I phoned Bright Doc and said, um, I just asked whether I'd just asked about it. Oh God, that makes me feel really guilty. In Gloucestershire, five-year-old Harry is taking advantage of Red's lenient bedtimes. So what do we do with him now that you've obviously made a decision that he must make his own decision and, um, and he's there now. Ad Whitley's probably asleep and just carry him up. If it were my rules, he would be in bed and asleep by now. So... Yeah, it's not ideal. Call this one wrong. The yeah. principle that you apply with your child doesn't yeah. apply with all other children. Yeah. I'm not defeated in the slightest. It's just... Um, it's the way it happened. It's not like... I can't be bothered to put him to bed. I'm so sorry. Cough, cough, I'm cough, giving him cough, a choice. Cough. It's proved that maybe that her ways aren't the best way, you know. Maybe she needs to realise that she has to find an intermediate halfway point, which, you know, we all, that, that she has to use. Red has insisted that Darren takes his first day off work in months to take on Nadine's daily routine. I want that! Well, you can't have everything straight away. We have a baker. I oh, will do some baking in a minute. You go and do what you were doing for 10, ten minutes. Dad, can you fix the PlayStation? I will. Do you you could do this on the bean every now and then? then. Mm. You can score a lot of, like, pints by doing stuff like this. Oh, I know that. Yeah, they're yeah. good books. Oh, yeah, I know that. Doing all the things she does and cleaning the house and running That's around and off. cooking. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not easy. I appreciate what she does more now. Last night, Harry had to be carried to bed after falling asleep downstairs. And Darren is now dealing with the consequences. Yeah. He read the bed last night. Aww. And that is another unusual pattern of his, yeah. to be fair. And he's normally really, really good. Yeah, so he's upset. Yeah, so he's upset and he's been in my bed. I think your rules do work for when they're a little bit older, but I think yeah. when they're younger, he's if they're not used if they're not used to it. He doesn't understand it, does he? No. He just doesn't understand I think for my son it doesn't work as such, yeah. I feel. Yeah. Then that's my opinion, I you know. I'd agree, he's yeah. not, he doesn't... Yeah. He's not used to it, he doesn't know no. what he's doing. Darren lives by rules, that's how they run their house and we run our house by having no rules. Harry doesn't usually wet the bed. So um, that tells me that Harry's really upset. Um, I don't think it's the rule change that's upset, I just think he really misses his mum now. I had to get rid of the t-shirt. To help improve their relationship, Nadine wants Dan and Xanthi to spend some time together. I quite like these. I like the fact that the print goes on the um, yeah. on the side. It was really peculiar yesterday when you came in and didn't say anything. Whenever I say something's happened to me, no one cares. So I don't see why this week should be any different. I the think it's uh, it's become a cycle of this because we both think that you have no respect for the house, you don't care about the house, you don't care about us. I'll sit in the living room and I'll just get ignored. I'll sit in there, the only person that will speak to me is Spike and he'll say, shut up. But what I'm saying is, I think what's happened is that, yeah, I shut down you because I was so sick of your behaviour in the house. And I think I'm getting a bit like that again because you don't help in the house. But then you're thinking, I don't help, they don't care about me. And then we go, but you shouldn't care about us. But you don't care about me, you don't care about me. We both all need to get over it and kind of accept each other a bit But no one's because... nice to me. My mum gets up in the... every morning, she'll get up, she'll shout at me, yeah, then she'll shout at you, no. and then you'll shout at me because she shouted at you. Generally, your room's a tip, 
you haven't done about 10 things she's asked you, that's why she's angry with you. I mean, it'd be really good if we could meet up for an, at least once a week for an hour, yeah. wouldn't it? Because I know, I'm sure you, even as it's been quite hard to talk about these things, it's still, it's out there now. You don't excuse people things, but you can say, all right, well, there is a reason for that. You are doing something for a reason. Um, and basically, you, can, you, can, you hear the other side of it, whereas a lot of the time, we, the only information we get comes through red. And I think me and Danny did forget to communicate because my mum's normally the one that communicates for us most of the time in the house. So I think it's, this whole experience has been good for me and him to build a relationship, I suppose. After clearing the air, they come home to declutter Xanthi's room together. Can you do something for me? Would you clean those windows? Yeah. Cool. Hold on. You're going to have to lift it a minute. I just want to see myself in the reflection, Dan. You have to let me back in when I should. Oh. <laughs> I think the household has learned how to get on a little bit. It's not only Dan and Xanthi who are benefiting from Nadine's rule changes. Spike is responding well to having structure and routine. <laughs> yeah! Did you clean your teeth? What, cleaning teeth? Yeah, I think what uh, Nadine's done with, with Spike um, has been great. I mean, she's used stickers, you know, rewards for doing not good things. And but at this age and how he is, it's, it's a classic thing, they need a bit of structure and he's really responded to it, really positively. It's the final day of the swap and the wives are preparing to return home. My biggest achievement while I've been here is just seeing Darren and um, Harry at the at fun days because his face just said it all. I think Dad's learned that he should be more helping Mum and things because when he did mum's role he found it quite hard so I think he understands what how much mum does. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks Chloe. Oh yeah good girl. Having read as my mum is very different because she's more like chilled out than mum. I think mine and Dan's relationship will probably improve. Not that he would ever have authority over me or ever be a parent figure but I might be his friend. Mm. Be a good boy, won't you? And collect lots of stickers. Yeah. Oh. I surprisingly didn't have issues with Darren. I thought I was going to when I read the manual. I've had more problems with the kids. Biggest problem I've had is their squabbling. I can't stand it. <laughs> they squabble all the time. It's continuous in our house. Yeah. They do, they just bicker so much. Yeah, I feel that discipline and routine is what is what children need. That was my problem, discipline the kids and then as soon hard. as they as soon as they saw that I was a soft touch, they were just like woohoo. Straight in there. <laughs> when I walked around the house, I was really shocked that I didn't see a young lady's room. Um, and that's why I wanted to give her a bit of time. So in my rule change it was to um, sort of make Dan and Xanthi spend some time together. Often she can just spew a load of stuff and you think that's just a load of old rubbish, but then you think, oh actually there were two or three things there which were actually quite important to her. Yeah, I listened to her basically. And Spike, I've put routine in the house, which is I, w I was really <laughs> proud of him. Spike, <laughs> well, oh, Spike, Spike's been go. amazing. So how Spike changed then? He gets up in the morning, he sits up, he eats his breakfast. We've got the reward chart, you know, classic. <laughs> your sticker, what, your sticker chart, chart got put away. He kind of did go for it. You did, didn't he, when he came out and he's like, It was like, really surprising. This morning he came and asked to clean his teeth. You ever heard him say that? Nah, it was pretty impressive. If I was having to get up earlier in the morning, I'm going to have to cut out time at the night time, which is means I'm going to have less time for me. Isn't, isn't your child more important 
What, is it my time or children? You know, child. I, I am selfish. I know I'm selfish. You admitted you're selfish. We are I am, selfish I am, people, basically. I am selfish, yeah, but uh, I just... I wouldn't be selfish for my kids' sake, but you know, I'm pretty selfish. Darren, you are. Oh, because I spend time with them, I suppose. But, <laughs> but no, but like, I would compromise. At the end of the day, yeah, I don't come home, but I'm working. You know, I've said it all along all week that I need to sort of sort my life out. I need to be getting home a bit earlier. It's great. It's great. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. And I just, you know, just didn't realise I didn't spend enough time with him. If you really want to come home, then you'll be at home, living Red's life. I haven't once felt lonely. It's been weird because when I left, I thought that I would miss you more than anything in the world, and I didn't miss you as much as I thought I'd miss you. I'm not there after some time. No. I cooked her a meal. I never heard the last of it, honestly. That was just like, that. hey, Dan's made me tea. I've That's had a lot of teas as well, yeah. and a Sunday roast. You are having a laugh. Nope. Full Sunday roast. <laughs> you knew how to do everything. You knew how to do it. He said he didn't it. want to cook. That was his problem. He could cook, he didn't want to cook. I think if I don't sort of butt me act at the end of the day, you could just piss off with the kids and not be there, you know? I really wouldn't want that, you know? And when somebody's gone, it's too late to get them back, you know? It's never the same, is it? You said Can't before be that you'd make an effort and you, you haven't. We, we've both got to change just the way we are, you know? And I've got to make the effort big time to, to make it better, you know? In defence of Darren, he has really, really tried this week. Really. <laughs> properly like life changing things he's he's been like he's been oh I'm really so happy you want to go home and can you do it <laughs> <laughs>
dicen los... 